Did I tell you about my neighbour last time I was here? Yes. Yeah. Well, guess what? That was him last night. Anne? Are you there, Anne? <sighs> okay, come in. So I let him in. And this is what he told me. He told me that he has... Um, 24 lollies. You know this sort on the sticks? Yeah. He's got 24 lollies. And he told me he's got a niece and two nephews and he's going to be making three mini Christmas stockings. Is that what they are? Does that look all right? That's right, isn't it? So he's going to make three mini Christmas stockings and he's going to put a quarter into each stocking. But this is what he told me. He said he needs nine lollies left over. Because he's going to do a lolly hunt. Do you know what a lolly hunt is? Yeah, you yeah. ever been on a lolly hunt? Yeah. And so he's got three nieces and nephews. He's going to save the nine lollies for the lolly hunt. Now this is what he told me. Do you know what this means? One quarter. One quarter. He said he's going to put a quarter of his lollies into each of the stockings and then he says he's going to have nine lollies left over for the lolly hunt. And I'm thinking to myself, that does not sound right to me. Does it sound right to you? No. no. Okay. Well, this is what I thought. I thought this afternoon you could sort that part out for me. Do you think you could do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll sort that part out first because then there's something else I need to tell you about. Um, can you remember the rules when you worked? To me there weren't many rules. What, was the, what were the rules? Do you remember? That you had to talk to people to help solve the problems of you. Okay, that you can talk to each other. That's one of the rules. You don't have to sit there in silence for me. You can't use your eraser. Oh. No rubbing out. If you make a mistake, you just put a line through it and keep moving. I've forgotten that one. Thank you. And there's one more. What has to go on the page? A picture or uh, something. Or you write something on there. That shows me what you are thinking. I want all <coughs> your thinking on your page. So don't just say, and it does work, or and it doesn't work, because will I be happy? No. I will say to you, how do you know? Okay. Any questions? So who thinks they're going to be drawing lollies this afternoon? Okay. Who thinks they're going to be using numbers this afternoon? Nice work. Who thinks they're going to be using numbers and pictures? Anybody think they might need some tallies or something? No tallies? Any other ideas? What I quite like about problem tie situations is once I've sent the students off to do their job, I'm redundant for a few minutes. I won't tell them what to do. It's not my job to rescue them. I give them enough think time, enough confidence, enough expectation that they can do it by themselves. Um, as soon as possible, I'll move in and find out what a student is thinking, what their plan of attack is, and I might ask some questions. I suppose prompting questions. Why are you doing that? Would something else help? Um, will that get you where you need to be? But I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to show them um, how to do it. I want to see their thinking on the page. That's the main thing. There's 24, and I know 24 you can count in two by 24. Yeah. So I circle twos, and because I don't get confused, I just wrote numbers at the bottom, yeah. and twos, and I notice if you tick the, across that 15, because you don't need those, because you're going to put these little stockings, you only need nine left. So you don't use those nine, but you put, you know, 15 can divide by five. Mm -hmm. So I need three to five to make 15. So there's three stockings, so I put one five, five lot of lollies, and that's five, and then I'm five to me, and I left with nine lollies. Um. Really what I do, I move in as soon as one child's got enough on the page for me to have a conversation with that child, I'll move in and you'll see I'll ask them to tell me what they've done, why they've done it. I might ask, is there another way you could have done that? Is there another way you could have counted that? How did you work that out? Can you prove it to me? What I'm actually doing is an intensive interview to find out 
exactly what the child's bringing to the task and then I'll start to prompt. Um, I'll try and push to see if they can go a little bit further. I'm watching the child's face, I'm watching the work sample, I'm listening very carefully. I stop at a, the moment I see a child's face change, I know I've done enough. Um, and then I ask permission to write the story of what they've told me on their work sample. It's really important to know I don't write on a page if I'm told I can't. I ask permission. If the child says no, then I write on a post-it. Um, what I write down, the annotations, is the documentary evidence. I now have documentary evidence, what that child did without assistance, what that child did with a prompt, and if I actually had to scaffold, what that child did as a result of a scaffold. So I've now got the documentary diagnostic information that I need. Can you tell me what you're thinking about at the moment? Well, I, I did 24 but at least I'm going to work and then left over so I know what I'm doing. Then I'm going to see... So it's going to take like nine off to see what's left and then divide them into the stockings and then... Wow, sounds like a good strategy. How do you whatever. know you've got 24 there? Because when I was drawing them, I was handing them as well. Okay, could you just double check for me? What would be a fast way of doing it? Going like 10 or 5. So I could do that. Circle them, make five. Oh, okay. Do you want them circled though? Will that get in the way at the end? Mm. I thought maybe you might just do them in twos or something. No, I don't want them to go in the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oops, double check that one. And then that one in and then got two left. Nice work. When the students have had time to grapple and work on the challenge, um, I'll try and find two or three work samples. I might use a I might use a sample with an error in it. I'll definitely use a sample from a less able student as well as a more sophisticated one. And when the students come to the carpet, what we try and do is involve the students in explaining what their thinking was, how their strategy worked. I might ask the rest of the class to get involved, to summarise what's said, ask questions. Um, so that learning, again, coming on the carpet, a community of learners, learning from each other, expecting to learn from each other, expecting to share ideas. Um, but also that's a time when the teacher can do a little bit of input. So that's the time where we might compare methods how is this one mathematically similar to that one? It's also the time where the teacher might say, well, there was another way of thinking about this. Um, do you notice how much it would have helped if we'd grouped those in fives or, or whatever it is? Um, so basically the lesson isn't complete until the maths has been deconstructed by the students, till um, their work has been shared and the peer learning has taken place. Can you put the chunking lines for me? Nice work. Now, I don't know, Matthew's just drawn this on his page with some help from his friend. That's me. And I'm just wondering whether Matthew can explain what went on. Could you talk us through that a little bit, Matthew? Yes, please. Um, you know, I've drawn um, six rows um, in quarters, and they like um, um, He's made how many equal sized groups have you made? Six. Um, four. Four equal sized groups. Turn around and face your audience, Matthew. You've done a brilliant job. Why would he make four equal sized groups there? What was he trying to find out? Because 6 and 6 equals 12, and you double do 12 equals 24. So he just wrote 6 groups, and then 6 groups, and then another, so he just put across, and that means 1 6 group, another 6 group, and another. And he kind of put in 3 stockings. Okay, do you agree with that, Matthew? So he drew the 24 lollies, he cut them in half that way, cut them in half that way, so he made his quarters. Now have a look and see, Matthew's put into those stockings, he's put six, six, and six. Why has he done that? Why did he put six in each stocking? Somebody else, I'm going to choose somebody. 
Oh, you want to explain? Okay, you do it, Matthew. Um, I put six in all of them because a quarter is six. A quarter of 24 is? Six. Remember my original problem? 24 lollies. And my neighbour, I'm sure he was trying to trick me again, said he was going to put a quarter of the 24 lollies into each stocking. And he told me there was going to be nine left over for the lolly hunt. Did he tell me the truth? No. If we want the students to have a positive disposition to maths, um, we've got to make sure everybody has success. You'll notice that I used work samples that weren't of a particularly high level. I even used work samples with mistakes in them. Um, now I can, I can work with those, I can get the whole class to work with those examples. I can make even the less able child feel successful. If a child's drawn, for instance, the 24 lollies and that was as far as they got with the problem, um, I can use those 24 lollies and use that child's work sample as a tool to get the rest of the class thinking. The child who didn't complete the problem doesn't have to feel um, any less successful. In fact, they feel highly successful because their work sample has been valued. Um, now, the other thing you'll notice that I do is I don't focus on the answer. I often leave the room and we haven't got to the answer. But what we have got to is unpacking and finding strategies and smart ways of dealing with parts within the problem. And that's my goal. I can come back tomorrow with a strategy lesson and pick up some of those pieces. Today, the focus is on the thinking.